um, where will the ambulance be coming to get them to be uh, safe for the residents, safe for, so like have, have you planned, I know we have emergency exits, but do we have like an emergency medical exit where they can easily get in and out with their vehicle? Would you have them come to the main entrance? Would you have them come through the parking lot? Or would it just be as fast as they could? Just thinking ahead for that, you know, you have the public safety on the outside, but you also have the public inside and their safety in emergency. Is that a question for the design team currently? Or is that something you want answered next time? Next time, fine. Okay. Just kind of like how emergency situations would be dealt with in such a tight area. The parking lot's pretty big, even the one in front. Mm -hmm. like it's, it's a decent sized parking lot. I spent a lot of time in that area. <laughs> yeah, no they I'm sorry. <laughs> they're maintaining all the existing exits as well. Okay. They're maintaining all the existing exits. Right, right. So, so they're taking one out. But they're okay. taking one out. I mean, beyond what, what happens, I, I would, we would agree. I mean, the main entrance, the main entrance to the courtyard be a large gate, be oversized, so for gurneys and that kind of thing. It's really ideally suited. And and then the main entrance to the building. I mean, that's gonna be the best for everyone. It it also means that inside the building there's um, you know an area just inside to triage if necessary, et cetera. So it's pretty straightforward. I think the other piece is that typically emergency uh, personnel will be aware of that because they'll know the address and that address will lead them right there. So I imagine that gate's smaller, so that knowing this. Oh no, and no. also, like, I've been at that property for the last year or so pretty regularly. Ambulances, UPS trucks, city trucks, all park right where the entrance <laughs> is going to be. That's where they take their breaks. I've seen it, I've, I've, that's great. You know, it, that's a, it looks small, but that's a really big part. As long as everybody's got it covered, I'm happy. I'm yeah. yeah. Okay, if there are no more um, last questions, on, uh, to, to consider for next time for the public safety conversation. Um, we're still finalizing the date for next month's meeting, so I apologize we haven't been able to get that out to you beforehand. We're actually, it's because we're looking for a location that would be available for an update. The locations would be available in April, so if anybody has any suggestions or ideas, um, feel free to send them our way. Um, and then we'll be getting that out to you next week for sure. So um, with that, we will go ahead and open it up for um, the public testimony. And then, Silver, would you mind? Oh, and Kate. Just for me, if when you give public testimony, please clearly say your name. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Okay, and it looks like we have a, like 13 people signed up. So I think um, I've got about 11 minutes left. So why don't you give me like a couple minutes? And then if people need to leave, you guys stop the 730 stop, please feel free to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to go down the line, um, and I'll call the first three names. And you can just come up here for public comment, that will be easier. So Allie Gilbert um, with LNI, and Nancy Merchant's going to be next, and then Gray Ayer. Hi, I'm Allie Gilbert. Um, I'm going to sound like a broken record to most of you, um, but that's because my concerns are not being addressed. Um, one is, I am a recovering alcoholic addict, so I vacillate between empathizing with addicts and um, alcoholics in recovery. Um, and that part, I say, I have major concerns about the location and the brewery and um, what have you, which we've already has been talked about. Um, and that's my addict side and my alcoholic side coming forward and I'm making myself vulnerable to that because I feel like I need to. Um, so yeah, so the location in that. Also, because I come from an addict alcohol background, and I know it, and I'm not, I'm not joking, I, mean, I really do plead the fifth, you get your drugs through property crime, straight up, okay? I know it, I know it. It's not like I'm sitting here pretending, like I'm some NIMBY, you know, I, I got my little Arteryx outfit on, but you know, I've actually worked really hard to wear my Arteryx. Um, and I say that because I come from hardcore. I mean, for real, I know about identity theft, and I have identity theft done to me. It was my karma, I guess. That's why someone broke down my fucking door. I promised I wasn't gonna swear. Um, <laughs> sorry, I do like swearing. Um, and that's my background. I come from a harder background, and I want that to be addressed. There is a harder element. I mean, I'm nine years sober, April 1st, and I still have it. See, I, mean, I still want to swear. I still got it because it's there. It doesn't just go away. So I want, if you're gonna have people, they're gonna be there. They're gonna have this harder element with drugs, 
And how they get their drugs is through property crime. And I have a house that's within a block away, and it's already been, my car's been stolen. Okay, I, I want that to be addressed. Okay, so I'm gonna keep on showing up, I'm not saying my stuff. There you go. Thank you. Uh, Nancy Merchant. And you don't have to stand behind the podium. If you don't want to. <laughs> um, my first question was, uh, how are people already living in our neighborhood being served? And I think you're addressing that, but I just want to emphasize again that I think people in the neighborhood really want to know that and will help with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the second one is, how are our new neighbors living here going to help have a positive impact on our community? How are they going to contribute like the rest of us have for 20 years? And I see the community really kicking in and people are becoming, foster Paul is really changing. It's becoming, you know, one where people know each other and um, are friendly to each other and um, helping each other, neighbor watches and that kind of stuff to try to make it a, a better neighborhood. So I'm wondering how this is going to contribute. So my answer is long, so maybe next time we can add that to the... <laughs> Let us know about the meetings too. Yeah, right. You know, because we had what two days notice. <laughs> you know, we don't get the information. Next door is the only place that I ever got this information. So from. this website, which I will write it down for you afterwards, the Hope for Everyone dot net. That's yeah. the place that's got all the documents, the meetings, the calendar. Okay, then we need to get that on the next door, okay. so that the community. Write it down for you. Yeah, I'm Shark's okay. page too. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Gray Ayer, and then we'll have Dana Schmidt and Patty Stone. Hello, my name is Gray Iyer. I am representing Southeast Allied Communities. And I have two questions here, which um, hopefully someone can answer. Uh, my first question pertains to what we've been told time and time again, which is that this is a shelter that should hopefully serve local residents. Um, at times, that's been explained to be all of Southeast. And listening to the OPD article just the other day that Home Forward surveyed most of, a lot of the families that they've been serving and how 50% of those, greater than 50% of those folks came from outside of the Portland area with their last uh, residence being a non-Portland zip code. So my question is, so that we avoid further strapping the meager resources yep. that we have to, mm -hmm. to help our residents, what are we doing to ensure that the people who are designated as local residents to go into the shelter are truly from uh, our neighborhoods, from the southeast, and from Portland? I don't know if you can legally do that, but that is one of my concerns. Uh, the second one is... Do I have time? Quickly. Okay. Uh, the second question I have, uh, Stacey can probably answer this best, is what is the... Do people time out from being a resident of the shelter? Um, I, I would be very happy if people are able to be moved really quickly into permanent or transitional housing. I know that there is going to be some people who are very difficult to do so. Can they stay indefinitely at the shelter? I have a quick answer. Okay. Um, so there's no maximum length to stay. People use their uh, can have their bed as long as they need it. Uh, and last year, across all of our emergency shelters, all of our programs that will operate, just like this one, the average length of stay was 69 days. Okay. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> Sometime we we'll answer the first one. Yes, the first, that's longer. Right. 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 Patty? Yeah, thanks. And again, all the names are listed here. Hi, I'm Dana Schmidt. My uh, question, I think, is more appropriate to address next week, but I just wanted for next meeting. I wanted to talk a little bit about public safety and make sure the conversation extends from uh, inside the shelter to also outside the shelter, um, the immediate surroundings, and also going into the neighborhoods around it. Because I do understand that the people who are staying in the shelter, the residents there, are very motivated to be good neighbors. But we know from research that when the shelter comes in, we get a lot of other people who are coming in basically to prey on residents. And I want to make sure that it's safe for residents of the shelter and of the neighborhood moving out a block or two in every direction. Maybe more lighting or making alleys um, safer, less attractive for people maybe coming there to sell drugs. Or... Thank you. So Patty Stone, and then it'll be Tom um, DeHardin, and I think Gus Cole. Hi, 
so I guess I had, my name is Patty Sam, I'm a neighbor. Um, I have two, I guess, questions. I don't know who to ask, so here I am. Um, so I think we can um, all agree that the goal for everyone that will be staying in the shelter is for them to be in two housing. And I'm curious to know if there's any kind of prioritization in affordable housing in Portland for people that are sort of graduating from shelters. Um, how do they get into a housing? Is there, I want to know if there's like a, any kind of special I don't know. Exactly. Does that exist? Uh, so yes, and it's a long, it's a longer answer. Um, okay. so, yes, it, yes. so we have we have resources that we specifically put into shelters to help people gain access. It's a competitive market for affordable housing, so we do some things to help the folks in shelter have a leg up to get into housing as much as possible. And then we also have homelessness preferences in our housing authority inventory. And so that gives folks coming out of shelter access. So, and there's more, but there are definitely sure. ways that people who are coming into shelter are being prioritized to get access to the world. Okay. And then I, I guess I have another second question. Um, during the presentation about uh, what the shelter is going to look like, it was mentioned that there's going to be some seismic upgrades. And my understanding is that we're leasing this property, and a seismic upgrade would benefit the landlord. I'm thinking, is there any chance that? They could contribute to the financial piece for that since it would benefit their property. How does it, I don't know how it works with commercial real estate. Frank, Frank response. Yeah, Frank response. We're working on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Drug usage is allowed in this facility. That's been pretty clear through multiple conversations that I've been a part of. Um, but in the design, we have not included any place for them to do drugs, which means that they are going to be doing drugs in my neighborhood. That's really concerning to me. I've asked this question multiple times and I've never gotten a strong, viable answer. I really need that yet. Talked about it next time. I need a real answer. I've asked this like three times at multiple neighborhood meetings. Um, and then, uh, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure. Um, Jared Walker, and then we'll have Benjamin uh, Donlin and Matthew Williams. Hi. I live uh, two blocks south of this site, and I'm going to just echo Jenna's comment she pretty much stole me from me. Um, but I'm, I'm really concerned about drug use and um, I guess drug dealing in the area. Um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong at any point. The point in time uh, survey says that probably 45% of the houses population in Portland are self reported drug addicts. And this is going to be a low barrier shelter with, with no dry requirements. Is that 